Welcome back to our animation analysis, and this time I'm going to take a look at the teaser trailer for Pixar's Turning Red. Trailers are coming out fast and furious. First we had Encanto, and now this. And I had to take a look at this, A, because I love the look of this. This so reminds me of my childhood exposure, the Club de Roté, you know, the French channel, with the Dragon Ball, all the anime stuff there. And just the way this looks, especially once we get to this. But it's great. Spoiler about what's coming up here. But you got to go back here. You got to look at all the detail. So you got the school coming up here. This is already, I was always saying, when I look at scenes like this and you got all those characters, like, okay, that's crowd's team or whoever's going to do all of this. But it's cute. Starts off, okay, we understand where we are. And then we have this and I already love it. I love the look of her. I love the look of just the, the lensing, the colors, the shot already. And this goes back to what I talked before and what I talk to my students all the time is imagine this is your shot and this is the first frame and you really want to build out the shapes, the shapes for the fingers, there's contrast in both of these. So you can see the height difference, there's contrast and asymmetry just in that, even though it's like she wants to make a point that's, you know, somewhat symmetrical, which is totally fine. You can't swing, obviously, but I like that it's just ever so slightly off. So right off the bat, it's just a reminder for students to, if you look at your shot, frame one, how much do you go into detail in terms of offsetting angles, height, just enough contrast in the pose, even if it's something where you feel like, yeah, it's not that important. I love stuff like that. The set dressing, it's already great. You can see the asymmetry here and it's in the mouth shape, just ever so slightly. Look at that. I love those character designs. Again, asymmetry in everything, right? How she comes down, even though she is straight, and you there's there's you know this danger of making this too twin too symmetrical you can see the changes in all of this just the way this flows everything just ever ever so slightly different so there's just enough asymmetry to make this work really well and even that if you look at how she goes down track the nose it's not <laughs> i'm saying this because this morning i did a workshop critique about one axis it's if you look at the path of this you got the ever so slight arc there as she comes down into this it's not one axis up and down with linear curves if you track that nose watch this again just really nice with that curve leading into this and then she also leads that turn more with the head then bringing over because she's thinking about this i want to open this up it's not some instinctual you know imagine you have a, a bee landing here and stinging her then the movement will come out here first. It would be like a muscle reflex, a pain reflex. So if you have a character turning around, you have to think about what is this turn? What is the intention of the turn? Is it again because it's a reaction? It's because she heard something, she wants to get something. It's a simple thing, but I always look at what body parts are leading and why. Got to, ooh, we got a frame through that. <laughs> Detail finger stuff. I always look at finger pussy. I love this here, just that, and then that's slightly off. With the pressure here, so you got that joint coming up there. We get to see her name here. Even that, I love that. Again, it's a simple thing, but she has her head slightly tilted. She's interested, right? There's a slight puppy tilt. If you have your head straight versus the head tilted, that's your little level of interest there. And I love that with, the, again, the asymmetry, just that slight tilt there. And just look wise, I love that the fuzziness, depth of field on this is great. And you can see the tiny detail. This is what I love about this. It is actually the main reason why I started this. Like, okay, how much detail is in here? Because if you watch this, you know I love all kind of finger detail. But you can see that. Look at that. There's slightly more pressure now and a little bit move in that pen. You can see how that finger moves down. The pen moves. You can see the compression lessens, right? You can see how this, it's a bit bigger here. And now she puts it back on the paper. Not only do you have compression on the paper here, but you can see how that finger just slightly squished her. I love that stuff. You get all the detail of the writing. It's a pain to do. Hand comes in, pressure on that. That's why it's curved like that. I mean, you can curve it, but you can have whatever finger pose you have. But I like that goes into this. Now, look at what this hand is doing. Obviously, you got some nice, just a quick little look here. But look at the finger here, right? Let's go back. Play this in full. This, I love that that she's concentrated on this and it starts to turn, lifts this up and all of this is still affecting this. You can see how that wrist 
goes up and chain is right from this going up here. And this is what I tell my students in terms of body mechanics. So you have this arm moving. Well, this arm going this way, be it, you know, whatever, FK, IK, whatever you want to do, you have to think in terms of what body part is going to influence what other body part, basically, right? So you have this arm moving is, let's go crazy with colors here, whatever, maybe not since it's red here, is going to influence the shoulder. You can see how that shoulder goes up here. And once you have that, let's go back to this here, switch color again, let's go with whatever, let's go with blue. You're going to have a chest turn because that arm is going to move and she wants to reach over there. So you're going to have to chest that turns as well. But all of that, let's go and switch whatever, take white. <laughs> you're going to have still an influence in the head all the way down into this. So basically, let's make this super complicated, whatever, take black. There is an influence that fans out. It's like the most messy drawing ever. So if you think in those terms, you got, let's go back to my other color. You have that arm moving over. That is going to influence the shoulder. And because of that reach over there, of course, the chest is going to go over there as well, as you can see. But you can't just lock it in here. Otherwise, you're going to have an IK arm here that's not moving. The wrist is not moving. The hand is not moving. And a kind of a locked head that either looks like a head IK or a head align. And if you look at this here, everything is moving. Now, she has technically the lead with the head. But she sees this, decides, I don't want this, and then moves the arm. But still, as the arm is moving, there's influence on here. You can see the influence on here. And because of all that, the rotation off with this wrist and the pen coming off that. Even here, you have a slight pressure on the paper here going up. So this is something that I love in terms of just body mechanics. And it's something that a lot of students get wrong, where there's, for instance, just the arm moving. And that is that. That's your IK arm, FK arm, whatever. There's no shoulder movement and there's no influence on the rest of the body. So if you have something like this, think in terms of the influence that fans out into the rest. All right, continues on. And you see this all over, right? So every time she has a reaction, the detail is all the way. She tenses up here. The tension is here. It tightens the fingers, brings up the shoulders. So good though. <laughs> I love the contrast in this. Look at that hand coming in. Beep, beep. And it comes in threes too. You got your one, two, and three. And then you got, again, this here. She decides to move that over. And even this is not just moving in a translate. You got a change rotation of the hands. Again, arm is moving, changes the shoulder, changes the chest and all of that. Because she's moving over this way, there's going to be a lean and a pressure on here. So you can see all that change in there and with the change in the head. So all those subtleties are really important as you go through bottom mechanics. Now, you might say, well, but she's moving this arm a lot. Why is this head not moving as much? It's because she wants to be really focused. It's like an angry focus. And that just re-emphasizes that I am watching you. Don't do this again, but I'm still going to grab this. So if you had her move her head around a lot, it would take away the stern focus. So just there are body mechanics and other acting choices that you have to kind of combine and be mindful of. Even this here, just the random frame. Love that. The grouping here with that extra gap through there. Your mom is outside. <laughs> go frame by frame to see what goes first you have that little tiny move in the corners the squishiness in the face is great you got the eyes going down and you have that ease in and the stop you don't want to go too crazy with the overshoot and you have a slight relaxation where she freaks out and goes oh so that firing of the muscles where everything's gonna stretch that out open up the lids is going to relax a little bit it's nice and subtle but that's for anybody doing facial takes or doing just eyebrows moving up or anything you have, even like a jaw down. You want to be careful about stopping this on a dime where it's just on one frame. Depending on the style, of course, there are different styles and you can be more extreme in one frame stopping. But if you go back to this here, it's like the trailer, the movement of that, the walk here. It's also really cute how she has her arms out. All of this, right? All of that movement sets up the world. So this is not... Hotel T, this is not Cloud of Chance Meatballs, it's not super snappy. So now everything that is continuing with this is going to fit that style. 
go back here. <laughs> love this. If you're watching this, I put a link of the full trailer. I love like the horror movie music, slow turn and camera move, revealing the mom. And I love how when she hides, she can't hide. She doesn't do it well. You can still see her back. This is what I wanted to frame through as well. Look at that. The shapes. They really have gone with Luca. It's just that a bit more outside the box of Pixar. I mean, I say this here as, as someone working not at Pixar, but as a, as a viewer, it feels like I'm really loving those character designs since Luca. Just kind of different from what they've been doing. Great shapes. And even this here, you don't see the teeth underneath. You don't see anything here. Just graphic shapes of white, the darkness. Yes, you can still see the tongue, but with like a very simple mouth shape. But in terms of clarity, not simple as in bad, but the clarity of it is great. And then you can see again mechanics of the lean and the settle. <laughs> she just kind of looks like, what is going on here? She says a bunch of stuff here and you can hear them arguing, but I love that it's still working. So I'm not playing the sound here. Visually, as he comes in, she has that lean out and over there. Look at all the things she does. It's like the, well, my daughter is here. You got a nice simplified hand shape. <laughs> He's still looking and then she shoes him off. There's so many great poses. Let's play this in full here just quickly. I love that. He is trying to grab her and you can see the reaction on her. Ooh, and then he goes back to balance. This is what we talked about during the encounter trailer when Mirabelle was moving over. So she has to move this way. And in order to do that, she needs to have a whatever, a that could be something here where she puts her arm here to push off this way or a leg to go and push off this way. It would be slightly strange for her to be like this, like that. Imagine the legs are here and she's not really gripping anything and she would be completely off balance. Maybe she holds back there. Maybe she will pull herself behind the tree. We can't really see it, but for anybody doing something like this, you got to be very mindful of your foot position. So for her to go over this way, again, that position mechanics wise is really good. I also love that the finger here comes first and then that into all of this here. This is a Karen gone wild. <laughs> I love how it's somewhat dainty, but it's still bah, into the shin. And this is there. You can see here the what we talked about the mechanics. This is now a pain reflex. So this is going to have the bigger move first because everything oh, radiates out this way into him holding this here. I love how she kind of speeds over. <laughs> then you got that. Saw this. I got kids and yep, they all have that. This is also great for contrast in terms of how each kit reacts differently in terms of expressions, the facial, the timing. Of course, if you do something like this, I love interaction. So you got the pushing and the squishing of the shapes there that pulls all that up, the nose and the mouth shape there. Still looking this way, you got an opening like that. <laughs> love that little contrast there of him opening and then oh, just that. Boop, boop. That's complicated shot. Got lots of mechanics here. I love this here. I love this, the look of that. Foreground elements blurred out, background elements blurred out with still a focus on her. I just really like the look of this. <laughs> so much to do. Why don't we continue on? I want to get to the red creature, which is her. Spoiler. Love this here. Look at this. I know this is super picky, but you got that lifting of the elbow. The pressure releases here, and you can see the detail in how the fingers are moving. So it's not. Just, I'm going to move my hand up and do nothing here. You have to think in terms of compression. This could be the fingers or, again, the hand on the cheek. And if the head goes away from the hand, then the cheek is going to change. The hand is going to change. That compression, all that is going to change. You can see it even here. She pushes against this hand. So you have the glasses moving over. I just love all that kind of detail stuff. Come on. It's so good. Detail in here. As she's moving, you're going to have to have some movement and tightening of the fingers and there's a slight offset in which fingers are moving i mean come on this is pixar so you're gonna have a lot of really good detail work loving the look of the renders come on that's great i love love that the holding of the bag get your clean poses and this here again i'm gonna the thing is i 
feet like this, right? Finger poses, that's sometimes easy to miss. So for instance, this hand pushing off, you could have a little bit of spreading of the fingers with the compression. But as he lets go, you can see the change in the fingers right there as they get off. It's a slight change, subtle, but it's still there. All those details. So same thing here. That foot gets on the ground. You can see how the shin and the legs point it this way. It's maybe not the best color. And look at the angle of the ankle here going in. Ready? And right there. You can see that it goes in. There's this type of compression there. And this is something that's just easy to overlook. As a student, you're already... You know, there's so much to think about in terms of body mechanics. And these are kind of the details that I personally wouldn't even push for at the very beginning. You got to really make sure that the balance, everything is right. But once you're done with this and it works, really think about the details and the compression of stuff like that, the weight and how this can come in in terms of rotation. Again, if the style permits, right? If you want to put in that much detail in some, you know, whatever TV shows or whatever, you're not going to have that much compression and complexity, compression, complexity. Speaking of which, you can see a really nice close-up of how when this goes down, it stretches the nose a bit there. Again, all the finger detail. You can see a little bit of interaction as she grips and grabs her beanie here, how that moves. I just love all that stuff here. Such great looking. I mean, this is going to be oh so good. Grabbing of that. I wonder if that's helped with Sim as well or all keyframes. Really nice close-up of seeing all the darts as they go over one frame with a slight ease in, but you don't want to be too spliny on the eyes. This gets you a bit too swimmy and if you're, you know, kind of spaced out or dazed. So this is your moment of, I am in, in, in like this is stress, right? So you're going to have a lot of quick little movements. You see a slight little jitter in the head or high frequency. Same thing in the fingers. Oh, this is so good. I mean, how long is this shot? Ready? So it's wait, wait, wait. Let's go back into your body mechanics assignment and Ooh, not that long, but great. Look at the contrast. Here, you're not you don't hearing you're not hearing the sound. Let me just put on the sound just for this. This is great. Because now you got your tail, it's mommy. You got that intensity of the voice. And it's paired with that going up and that for a higher contrast. You can see how high she gets here. I put on my onion skinning. And that now it's this high. And before that. It's here. So it's a escalation of stronger and stronger, but also because of the voice. That's me. So this is for you doing a body mechanic shot. This is a really cool shot. Hey, you got complications of a run. And then you got a sidestep when you add the second character, right? So you got the complications mechanics wise of these two. But then you start having interaction. Right now it's a bit of a dodging side to side. Again, Mechanics in terms of going forward and then side to side. So you have contrast. That's really cool. And if that wasn't enough, now you have this. Now you have compression and interaction. This is complicated to do. You can see that he also grabs her here. She falls down and leans or leans. Has like all that weight on that arm. So he has to come down because she's pushing him down. And so on and so on. You got this here where he starts to lift her. So now she's less in control. That leg is going to dangle. I mean, there's so much in there in terms of mechanics, plus pantomime, plus lip sync. So great. Framed in these two characters. I mean, I would love this. If a student goes, what should I do in terms of mechanics? There we go. That's your shot right there. It's interesting. There's a lot of contrast. It's complicated. You have a lot of possibilities to show up weight and interaction. But it still is a shot. It's not like a you know character in an empty scene with the box and lifting the box, which I did. I mean, every, every student has that assignment. But this is more of a me complicated mechanics that is just part of the shot. The thing that she needs to do is I am going from A to B because I want to talk to my daughter, right? And as she does that, this happens to be this. So that's her objective. That's what she needs. But within the shot, you got like the weight assignment in a way. You got a body mechanics assignment. You got to walk in there. So lots of separate quote unquote student assignments that we had not as teachers are all in here in a really cool shot. Sorry, I lingered a lot on this here, but it's just really well done. Again, lots of really cool detail in the shapes here. Now this is red. I'm going to change color again. I 
I love that. I love how it gets, you can see this here, the change. This intensity, again, talked about high frequency. So if she's freaking out, you can see all the movement all throughout. If you watch the framing and just how it moves, it really turns into high frequency. You got a widening of the nostrils. There's so much detail in there. Let's shake there. So good. <laughs> and I love how it changes to this kind of lighting. Oh, you got your squash stretch. You can see a little bit of the top of the teeth, but you can see there's a lot of times it's graphics. You don't show, I forgot what it's actually called, ESL strikes again, but it receives just enough to still be graphic in terms of the darkness, the tongue, and the shape. <laughs> Love how it snaps down. It's so great. Look at that. You got all the extra detail in here as she pushes over. Ooh, into that. I just love looking at this here. Again, the compression, the lighting is great here. And that is cool too. So you got that coming out and it's kind of your, your other body mechanic shot where you, you're showing off force in terms of an outside force influencing and interacting with something else. You can see how everything will be pushed this way. You can see this here, all of that. First you got maybe the wind and that pushing the hair, which is lighter. This is heavier, but you got all of this. I love all that. Again, I would love to animate this. I don't know if people get really, I want to do character stuff. I would love to do here the camera, all of this. Oh, this is cool. Nice. But well, that's definitely cool to see all that outside force. Actually, I'm curious if this was simmed again. Because a lot of times people like doing things frame by frame by hand. I don't know. This was done by hand. Or not. I love this. Actually, I love that the teacher is almost protecting here. I would assume so, huh? In, in his instinct, he's still trying to protect the kids. Okay, I think radiates out. That was great. And then we got that reveal here. <laughs> nice. You got the nice little quiver here. Oh, look at that. Oh, great hand poses. Again, pushing off. So you got this with the spine. Whoa, being pushed this way. <laughs> Here you go. Let me see. Let me see. Yep, yep, yep. So you got this guy pressed against the window. Yeah, it's great. So this is what I was talking about in terms of the, the detail. So the fingers are at the window here. And now that pressure is going to push into this shape there. All that little detail works. You can really feel that this window is not going this way either. This is a compression interaction there. It's great. Nice clean hand pose. I know I always say this. If you're watching this, you're probably tired of me drawing out those uh, silhouettes there, but it's just nice and clean. I just like it. And you still have contrast, right? It starts like that. It's almost like clean, but she's not yet influenced enough. And here there's more. You can see the influence on the cloth. And now I'm reading way too much into this. It's just for nice contrast. But as this is you know, more out of control and she's less in control, the pose of the finger reflects that as well. I'm totally kidding, by the way. I, I, I don't know if that's, that was the intention, but it's nice in terms of clean to less clean, but also just for contrast. And then, nice, come on. That is great. Such a great frame. Ooh, nice little quick change here. Look at that. So you got your clean silhouette on the fingers. That's something else you have to think about in terms of blur. Not enough blur, right? So you have a clean silhouette. And the moment you start moving fast, the blur is going to hide a lot of stuff. So if you have, I mean, you know, I don't know yet, if you want to animate, you don't know the lighting conditions here, but that the darkness and the light is going to help you with the silhouette. It's going to be trickier and something that's like blown out there. But the reason why I mentioned blur is because Sometimes, you know, we animate things, we don't have blur in the in the render. I mean, we do have, I mean, at ILM, we have a blast with blur. But the thing is, you have to consider that it's not moving, so there's no blur. It's going to be all clean. And the moment you move something really fast, be mindful that the blur might potentially hide your posing. So every now and then, you might have to do something where you want to see more of it. <clears throat> so you slow down things on purpose so that the blur gets lessened so we can read either facial shapes or, uh, you know, finger shapes. Not that this is happening here, but just talking about that in general. So good though. Again, you got the high frequency. 
or the quick moves, not high frequency, but the really quick darty moves, especially in the eyes. You can have a quick move with a little bit of ease into that. That's great. And then you got the squashiness of that face. It's a classic take. Anticipate and then whoop, right? You go down first, shoulders up into a stretch. This goes down. <laughs> He's not seeing it. All right. So cute. Let me just go back here just quickly. Even this here, though. I mean, like, really? Yes, even this here. Imagine. All right, I want to show weight and body mechanics. Okay. Well, I'll have something that's elevated, and the character maybe slips down less in control, so you can have fun with crazy poses like this, expressions. And then you got the complications of that compression. So this foot can go further down. So it's going to have a push and a roll effect of this in terms of mechanics. And you can see that it lands like this, and then it lands like that. So you have the contrast of this. Again, this is because of this leg here. But then it has to continue because now that arm is going to stop the fall, going to push the body up, turn into that. Just really nice complexity. And this is super, super short. Obviously, you can make this longer. For an assignment, this would be too short. Let me just play this. Let's see. Yeah, it's a bit short. You would make this a bit longer. But I just like the idea of the elevation to this and because you are in, in asymmetry in terms of the land, it's going to really complicate the mechanics there. And actually, if you do this, you want to make an extra complication, make it a creature, right? At this point, it gets into more creature mechanics and posing. Not here, but again, I'm thinking in terms of, of students, right? They want to do something more complicated. Don't make this a human, make this an animal. So you have to deal with a tail and so on and so on. There are always great ways to you know, make your shots more complex to challenge yourself. I just have to go through this again. Nice asymmetrical shame, but I like this. I like all that. Come on, it's great. Even this here, you got the contrast of run, run. I love how the arms go side to side. It's so cute. But then you got that as your anticipation for the jump. Because you can't really anticipate backwards with it straight to camera. So your line of action change is not going to be as pronounced if you go straight to camera. But now by going sideways, it's a nice contrast. And it tells us this way and then this way. <sighs> Going up. <sniffs> Talk about this here. Holy moly. So again, body mechanics. What would be more interesting than a flat surface? Well, you got elevation change. You got a gap. So someone has to jump. Again, elevation change with this. There's no clear landing on this. So this is a great example of really nice, complicated body mechanics. Also, <laughs> point it this way. So there is a 180 turn of a character. And how long is the shot? Ready? And just long enough. It's not too short, not too long. But this is great. A little similar. It's a great example for any student watching this going, well, I can do body mechanics. I want to do something more complicated. There we go. It's like... Pan and travel, mm, not that much pan, just the travel with the camera. It just makes this more like a character that's struggling to go from A to B. It just takes it out of the exercise realm and also love the detail because, you know, there's going to be weight. It's going to influence all of this. Breaking, breaking, be fun to animate. Come on, it's great. I love this. This is a beast. Get the mom there again, a little detail and compression. <laughs> nice. Love that expression change. But again, leaning over for contrast into mm, more determined. So you're going to lean forward. It'd be, I mean, it'd be kind of fun to be in this lean and still have that face in there. But it's nice. It's a nice contrast. She's still holding on to her purse. What is she? A shoe? <laughs> She's holding on to a shoe. Nice. Nice simulation of the fur. <laughs> so great. Love the colors. Love the colors in this. Bam. There you go, title. Turning red. Oh, yes. I saw this here. I'm looking at... There was a great moment of a flutter of, of the, um, the eyelids. This here. I love that. Not quite the blink. The, uh, 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 uh. Just feeling more comfortable. The slight flutter. Right there. Ah, oh, so good. Of course, interaction. 
This is tricky, of course. A lot of rigs, you know, will potentially not have that much. Well, I'm not going to talk about fur, but there's in terms of shape control to really push all of this in the direction of an object pushing against the face. But it's always fun to see. You can see all the stretching here. So good. And when I want to go through this frame by frame just to see what happens first. All right, so one frame pop there into her, but you still got the upwards move. So anybody doing this, right? Let's pretend you have this, this is your assignment. You got the creature up and then revealing the human. I like that. The continuation of this, this is going to be my arrow. All right, here. The upwards movement of the creature continues in the human. Now you might say, well, yeah, of course, but eh. I've seen enough student work where that, again, might be overlooked. You got really nice hang time. And then the drop. It's nice with the delay on the hair, the drag overlap. I like, love the shape here. Boring. But just enough of a bounce. But not not too soft. It's just bringing enough. It's really nice. And a slight change there, right? That's a pose. Now look at the arms and hands. And into this that that slight change again this is all stuff that people might not do you might just go land and then look down and that's it but it's nice to have a little bit of a upwards move of the root it's almost like she's going up and maybe back a bit to see better to see oh have i changed that's really like that slight rotation in the in the wrist as well for contrast again so it's not just a simple one axis root up it's a little bit of a translate over this way, just enough. And again, you don't want to keep your wrist stiff. So it's a little bit of a change in there. It's just enough nice detail there. Now, picky hat on. Say that if you push up, right? So the compression is on the feet. Be nice to have a tiny bit of compression on the fingers, on the toes here. Maybe a slight spreading out there. It's my picky hat. But you see it here, right? See this? You got the compression down, and now you can see this. So you might argue, well, this is the style, it's slightly more limited. So on the small move like this, it's not gonna be any spreading because we have it here. You can see even the downwards compression, it's not just a spread, but even down. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Come on. That is like all oh my childhood anime cartoons there <laughs> even this here it's not just a ah oh, frustrated up and down to like within one axis and again i'm hung up on one axis just because it's something i'm going to talk about tomorrow in my animation mentor q a but you got that little up and then i made a note <laughs> talking to myself now but just a nice move of up over asymmetry into that step over there with a slight camera follow as well. It's just nice. It's just nice that it's not all one axis. Always always a uh, sticky point in my reviews. I'm sure someone's going to go through this frame by frame and see some Easter egg something in there. <laughs> That's a great frame too. Look at that. Anyway, also cute in terms of effects. The puffy cotton explosion there. Yeah, really super cute. I'm really looking forward to this. Now, you might say, I'm always saying this. Well, I am. I am looking forward to it. I really like the design. Could be a fun premise. <laughs> Comedy is already there. The animation is really well done, which, of course, it's Pixar. I just like that. Like that kind of pushing this a bit more. The design, this is so cool. I'm going to end on this here. Come on. But yeah, very, very, very cool. So, as always, feel free to comment. Uh, last time I got a comment about it's not critical enough. Listen. Making a point here, you might find a fault, not in this frame, but you might find a fault in a shot here. And no, I'm not going to comment. I mean, even though, you know, picky on foot compression here, but if anything is not good, no, this is not the channel to do this. I'm not going to bag on, on another animator shot because anybody working in this industry knows that whatever you do, the final result is not just the animator. It's going to be comments from the lead, the soup, whoever else, the clients, then there's time constraint, budget constraints, there could be a crazy deadline, the rig could have broken. There's always a reason why something is in the shot. And sometimes the reason just out of your control. 
right? So no one asked me to critique this and make comments about this. I just want to highlight the positivity of it. I love this. If you want to hear me, you know, not complaining about critiquing things, I have a massive playlist of workshop clips. So there you can hear my, my balanced feedback. But no, I'm not going to bag on either coworkers or friends or other animators' professional work. That's not what this channel is going to be. So if that's something you're looking for, it's not going to be this channel. Anyway, quick rant at the end, but I'm leaving with this. If you like this, I hope you did. It's always on the longer side, but I love to nerd out on all this here. Oh, come on, so many great shots. I love it. I can't wait to see more. So that's it from me. Thanks for watching. Again, thanks for your patience for watching this until the very end. Where's the frame? Where's the frame? I want to end on this here. And come on. So good. That's it for me. Thank you. And I will see you in my next upload.